Greetings, greetings. Uh, look here, man. Um, it's I've been noticing a trend. Um, okay, apologies. Let's get the apology out. This video is gonna be long. This video is gonna be long because I'm putting in other clips, and I want you to really get what I'm saying. And the best way for you to get what I'm saying is to see what I saw. So then. You know, I could post the links and say, oh, go check this video out. But then they might take the video down and then there we go. This video is no longer uh, of value. So my question is, America, like what, are we overstepping our boundaries, right? Now, those who don't know, our country has a, a trend of going to other countries, you know, Poorer countries, of course, less violent countries, of course, and, and, and forcing, imposing their will on that particular country. I'm not sure that that's quite right, um, especially in the examples that I'm thinking about, you know, the way that powers that be, you know, did France, I mean, not France, whew, you know, France got something to do with it though, right? But Haiti, Haiti's a great example of overstepping boundaries. Like, wow, they, these people, in a nutshell, said, no, 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 we're going to be free. We're not going to be no slaves. So they fought. They fought like they should. They, they fought like they should. And for that, you know, they, they bankrupted them. You know, they, they, they did them real bad. You know, they did them real bad. They started playing real bad with them. So basically, if, you, if, you, if, if I can't rape you the way I want to rape you, then we're going to do everything we can to, to see you go down. This is America's policy. And of course, the other, other superpowers out there, right? But I, I travel a lot. And um, whenever I travel, I try to talk to the people of the, 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 you know, the country that I'm in. I want to really learn or get some real perspective, not, you know, some American perspective of another country. I want their perspective of their own country. So I was in Belize in this particular clip that I'm going to show you. And, and I was talking to one of the tour guides. And I, like I said, I, I ask everybody all kind of questions and I, I interview everybody. So this dude started to tell me about how America is what I call overstepping her boundaries. Forcing these people to do what they do. All right? So I'm gonna go ahead and roll the clip and I'm gonna, then I'll get back to you. You know, uh, sodomy is, is against the law, you know? It is against the law for a man and a man or a woman or a woman, right? Yeah. But you know, oh this, break, this thing is breaking out all over. This, I tell these people, I say, listen, this has been happening before Jesus Christ was born. It's gonna be happening while we are dead and gone. Get over it. Get over it. Who am I to judge you? And you say it's a sin? So, 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 he who has no sin cast the first stone. So that's what they that, say. That, that's what I tell people, you know? Uh, so, the American government and the British government is putting pressure on my country right now to uh, wipe it out of the law books. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, don't, if they take it out of the book, that's not, that not a crime. If you want a man who want to love a man or a woman who want to love a woman, if you want to take it out of the book, that's not a crime anymore, right? Yeah. So, the British government and the American government is putting pressure on this government right now to do that. Uh, we used to have capital punishment. We used to hang people for murder. Yeah. Well, they put pressure on this country the same way uh, the British government. Uh, so we're not going to give you no aid anymore yeah. and so on. So, but if you continue hanging the people, then you don't get nothing from us. So, so much for independence, huh? Yeah, so so uh, we don't hang people anymore. So oh, they, man, you just stop doing that too? We stop because the, the British and the American government put pressure on this country. We're not going to aid you anymore financially. If you continue doing that, so we stop doing that. So I guess gotta wipe it out the books now. That is, it's not a bad, it's not wrong for a man to love a man or a girl to love a girl. They got the American government and the British government is putting pressure on this country to wipe it out the books. That's crazy. All right. So you just you just saw my man talk about what he talked about. <sighs> I don't want this to turn into a, a gay debate, whether gay is right or wrong. I, that's, that's, that's beside the point. My point is, if these people are living, you know, one nation 
under God, right? Like we claim to be doing. And their God in their book said that homosexuality is wrong. It is against God's law. If this is what his book said, who are we to go? First of all, we claim to believe in the same book. First of all, this country supposedly is under that same God, under that same book. But we go over there to make life harder for them, to force them to go against their God. I don't know if that sunk into y'all. So, wow, I, you know, I hope that sink in. How about that? Um, this is crazy. This is crazy. So, what, what makes it more crazy is America only, like I said, they only do this to poor brown people. This is just what it is. And for the smart guy out there that'll find some poor group of lighter skinned people <laughs> in history that they, you know, been violated, I get you. Good one, buddy. Generally, this is how it goes. But what bothers me the most is our president, a black man, can't do anything to make life better for his own people or the people that resemble him and his family here in the United States. He's supposedly the most powerful man in the world, that's what they say, but yet yeah, life is still hard for me. I have to wonder if I'm gonna get shot by the police as I drive through the town, as I ride my bike through my own neighborhood. I have to, I have to worry about this. I'm, not, I'm being for real, I'm not exaggerating. This is ridiculous. The police come by and give me stupid looks often. Now, I'm not committing a crime. I've been living here for four years, so they know me. So what exactly is the problem? I don't know. Off me, back to the topic. He can't make it cool for the people to look like him here. But he is forcing other brown people, other people that look like him, giving them a harder life abroad? You gotta really start asking some real questions. Like, what's really going on here, you know? Um, what are we, because you know, at the end of the day, we support him, we support all of this. Because if you sit by and don't do or say something about the wrongdoings in the world, that, that's support. Hey, sorry about that. Uh, technical difficulties, uh, the tape ran out, so I had to start a new tape. But what I was trying to talk about was supporting, you know, gotta be careful what you're supporting. You know, and, and everybody, of course, doesn't take any responsibility of their level of support. And you know, for a great example, if you look at America, you know, post-racial society where nobody's racist anymore. Um, but if the majority of non-racist white folks continue to remain silent, then their silence is easily understood as support for racism. It's that. It is their issue to fix. It's their issue that they created, so they have to fix it. Now, if it's only a minority, only a few racist white people in America, then the majority should have already rectified that situation, if that's the case. So, when we support a president, a government, anybody, a teacher, a husband, a preacher, a whoever, if when you support somebody that's doing something that you don't believe in, you, you need to let it be known that you don't believe in that. You need to speak out, you know? I was taught that you make change. If you cannot change it with your hands, you speak on it. If for some reason you can't speak on it, you know, the least you can do is at least hate it, you know, at least hate it. But people ain't even hating it. People ain't even acknowledging it. They don't even care. People ain't even taking the, the smallest, the weakest way out and just to, to personally hate what's going on, hate the injustice. This is crazy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut to the clip of Obama or, or the case being made on Obama so you can, you know, see it, hear it, reflect on it and, and give me some input about that. You know, roll the clip. Hello, welcome to The Trues. Kim Kardashian has changed her hair from yellow blonde to platinum blonde, but it's the 50th anniversary of the Selma Civil Rights Marches, so perhaps we shouldn't be talking about the colour of Kim Kardashian's hair, but the colour of her husband. 
Are black people now in a better position than they were 50 years ago? We've got a black president in America, so what's going on? In Madison, Wisconsin, there are protests after the shooting of an African-American teenager by a white police officer against the backdrop of that extraordinary ceremony Saturday. President Obama leading 40,000 people in Selma, Alabama, 50 years after that bloody confrontation on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. What value does a ceremonial march have, even if led by nominally the most powerful man in the world, the black president of the United States, Barack Obama, while simultaneously another 19-year-old unarmed African-American teenager is shot by a white police officer. We just need to open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to know that this nation's racial history still casts its long shadow upon us. Well, Barack Obama, isn't it confusing? Because he seems like such a nice, lovely man. He's president of the United States of America. He's black. And yet racism seems to be a prevalent and divisive issue. Doesn't that kind of tell you that the President of the United States doesn't have sufficient power to change things. So where is that power? If the President of the United States can't change things, if the President of the United States can't defend or protect his own citizens, where is the power that you would think would be in the office of presidency and in the form of government? Where does that power actually reside? All this in a week where the Justice Department revealed a pattern of racist practices in Ferguson, Missouri. Which found a pattern of racial bias in Ferguson policing. The report revealed the department's routine practices of racial bias against black residents. Routine practices of racial, like routine, if you think about what that means, that means an unthinking. Uh, cleaning your teeth, da, 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 put a muddy deodorant. Be racist to the black man. Hey, what are you being racist for? Well, what, so, what? Oh, no, you only dropped the racism there. <laughs> it's unthinking. The report also detailing racist emails sent by city employees. The 102 page report released by Holder today detailed examples of a police department out of control, <laughs> routinely insulting and assaulting African Americans. Routinely insult, assault, insult, assault. And use of dogs by Ferguson police appears to have been exclusive reserved for African Americans. We're going to use the dogs here. Well, I think there's some white people. Good point. We won't use them. Wait till we have our exclusive black people model to observe. Among the most damning evidence, emails, including ones allegedly sent by department leaders that included racist jokes and depicted President Obama as a chimpanzee. In one email forwarded by officials, a picture of bare-chested African women dancing was captioned, Michelle Obama's high school reunion. Evidence of an attitude that is connected to the routine racism, insults and assaults and use of dogs. If you look at Niall Fort's piece in The Guardian, he says, makes some really interesting points about how the racism in America is not just about police brutality, but an all pervasive racism that just finds its most expressive and obvious form in police brutality. It's everywhere, but you don't notice it until it becomes vivid and pronounced in the form of brutality. He says that the report demonstrates that America itself is fundamentally racist and anti-black. He says that what we're dealing with is not uh, individuals like that, uh, the copper that got off from doing the killing, Darren Wilson or whatever he's called. What we're talking about is just and or unjust systems. The most insidious form of racism manifests in institutions, not individuals, in systems, not personal feelings. And this is a broader issue even than race, that if the systems themselves are corrupt, if the institutions themselves are corrupt, it doesn't matter if you have a president who is black, with a wife who is black, with children who are black, with intentions that are good, that wrote a book that seemed very inspiring and like a man who had a genuine and legitimate intention to make the world a better place. That is irrelevant. He's just a person coming into a system that is totally corrupt. But what does it say about America, an America that has a, a black first family, has black superstars like Kanye West married to the uh, Kim Kardashian with her ever-shifting hair colour, and superstars like Jay-Z and Beyonce? Doesn't the prominence and prevalence of such powerful black cultural figures and indeed political figures mean that actually America has changed? It doesn't seem to mean that, does it? So what does that mean? Another message in June 2011 compared dogs to African Americans, suggesting the animals needed welfare because they were mixed in color, unemployed, lazy, can't speak English, and have no freaking clue who their daddies are. If that's how you think, it's easier to hit people with a baton and then one day shoot someone dead if you're already thinking of them in animal terms. All of these emails indicate a reductive and 
um, condemnatory comparison of black people to animals, which is very, very common in racist societies, Nazi Germany being just one example. One of the persons who was sending these emails was actually the head of the municipal court system. Uh, her name is Mary Twitter. We have a picture uh, on, uh, of her with a couple of other uh, city officials, including Darren, Darren Wilson. I mean, that's literally institutionalized racism. They're in charge of an institution and they think in the terms described. So. Having a black president or Jay-Z and Beyonce as prevalent cultural figures begins to look not like progress, but merely an abstracted demonstration of a dislocated form of black power. Like the, the, the power is irrelevant. If it doesn't impact on that level, what you want, what you need is black court officials, uh, black CEOs of major corporations. And what it makes me think is that power is emanating at, from and contained within a bandwidth that is not affected by politics. The great unstated problem in the narrative of American life or the life of Western secular democracies in general is that the power is not held at a governmental level, it's held at the level of transnational corporations. So whatever's going on in the conversation of popular culture, oh look there's a woman from Armenia married to a prominent black man, Jay-Z and Beyonce are two of the biggest stars in the world, the President of the United States is a black man. All of that is irrelevant, it isn't progress, it's a, just a, sim it's a symbol and in fact if anything, represents a deterioration of the power of politics because you can have a black president who can't make any impact. You would think, wouldn't you, that Barack Obama, president of the United States, could overnight go, this stops, this Ferguson thing, this stops. We're scrapping the entire police force, we're replacing it with a completely new, uh, ideologically led institution that's going to treat people fairly and justly based on a... Uh the constitution that we already have that says all men are created equal. So what it shows us is that Barack Obama being black and being president isn't a demonstration of progress, but a demonstration that politics itself has no power, that politics itself is simply an institution that enacts power for the truly powerful transnational corporations. That the police are not, their institutional racism is irrelevant because they are merely the henchmen of the truly powerful. The henchmen of the truly powerful. Their power is only the power to be brutal. So whilst their brutality is visceral, vivid and ugly, it's irrelevant when compared to the power that happens in the elite strands of true governance that is the transnational corporate world. Among other findings, that Ferguson police disproportionately targeted African Americans with 85% of vehicle stops, 90% of citations, and 93% of arrests, even though 67% of the Ferguson population is black. What you want is those, the institutions that are dominated by white people to be broken up and disassembled so that power can truly be with the, with the people. And until you change that, you will get situations like this and comparable situations where ordinary people the world over are oppressed, maligned, and even shot dead on the streets, regardless of the color of their president, regardless of the color of Kim Kardashian's hair or Kim Kardashian's husband. Due to the edit, I'm concerned that the video didn't flow the way I want it to, but hopefully you get the point. Hopefully that this will create a conversation and you know, we could um, take this to the next level of conversation. You know, this is definitely entry level conversation right here. Chime in folks.